In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate the absolute and percentage uncertainties in your slope, and then if you really, really, really want to, you can go above and beyond and calculate the absolute and percentage uncertainties in the y-intercept, uh, but that's not really, that's not required. So first, let me show you my slope values. My maximum and minimum slope was 2.703087 is what that is, and the minimum is 1.8454, the units for each is y units centimeters divided by seconds to the 0.7 or what I've written is uh, y units times seconds to the negative 0.07 sorry 0.7 and there they are I've introduced the values from the graph you cannot use my identical phrasing um, that would be considered academically dishonest so find your own way of saying it to say it in your own words uh, you can list, you can use the format. This is a fine format to use. Max slope equals, put it on its own line, nice and centered. That's a great thing to do to emphasize the importance of the information. So I'm going to find the absolute uncertainty in the slope. I'm going to find, I'm going to state the value of slope, you know, using the x plus or minus its uncertainty form. Then calculate the percentage uncertainty. And this is sort of the way that your uh, sample calculations go in your lab report. You build them into the text, and you explain them as you go, rather than like putting them all at the bottom in an appendix. So you don't really want to do that. <coughs> okay, so I'm going to use in Excel, uh, sorry, in Word, I'm going to do these uh, calculations. I'm going to show them using the equation builder, which is really, really cool. The way you get to the equation builder on a PC is you push Alt and then equals at the same time and now we have equation font, the equation builder. Another way to do it is if you go to, I'm going to have to pull, extend this out here. If you go to insert, then let's go a little farther, insert. Now you see equation popping up. So you just hit the pi button. Don't do the drop down, just hit the equation button. Oops, <laughs> I put it in the middle of nowhere, something. Uh, insert, equation. And now, there's a new tab on your ribbon. You click Design, and there's all these awesome features. Okay, So I'm going to move this. You know what? I'll keep this over for now. So Design. I want to add a triangle, because I'm going to show you know for delta. So absolute uncertainty in slope equals, watch this. Oh, you are going to love this. First, I'm going to do 1 half and then I hit space to change it into a fancy, the fancy formal uh, font. Then I'm going to open my parentheses and say max slope, but you could do slope underscore, so shift to get to the underscore. Slope underscore, uh, don't type max, just type MA for a second, and then it makes it subscript, and then complete the max. Mm, let's see, what is it, max minus min, half range, minus slope underscore min. See, look what happens if I just do min. Oh, min has its own fancy way of popping up. They think you mean like some other special function called the min function. You don't want that, so you do control Z. You just do mi, and then you complete the min there. Close your parentheses, hit the space to get those parentheses to be around your, you know, slope max minus slope min equals, now you plug in values, one half space, open parentheses, grab this, 2.7087, and put in the units, got to show your units in the sample calculations, centimeters, seconds, caret, negative 0 0.7, oh, you're going to love this, hit space bar, boom, take away the italics, on the units, units are never italicized. Then you subtract the max slope, oh, sorry, you subtract the min from it, 1.8454. I'm lazy, so I'm just going to copy these units. I'm not going to write them out again. I give a space between the unit and the value. Close the parentheses, hit spacebar so that the parentheses apply uh, to this thing. Here's what I mean by hitting the spacebar after parentheses. If I have parentheses like this, and then I hit spacebar, boom, look at that, so fancy, you already know. Okay, then equals, let's calculate, 
Boop, 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 boop. Uh, let's see. I'm going to subtract the two. Whoop. Uh-oh. Seven, eight. Seven, oh. Oh, gosh. 2.7087. Then I subtract from it. 1.8454. Divide by two. And put that in. Four, three, six. What was it? Four, three, six. Four, three, one, six, five. And then I need the same units. You know that this is absolute uncertainty. You know we round it to one sig fig. So we are going to make that, we're going to do that step down here. We're going to say the slope of my function equals, add the equation, slope equals, write down the original value of the slope. So it was on this graph, 2.3879. And then we're going to do plus or minus, so go back to the design tab. Whoa, minus or plus? Weird. Plus or minus, and then you round this to one sig fig, 0.4. Copy the units. Give a nice space between the two. There we are. And then we have to round this one, the value, to the same precision, the same place as the uncertainty. So this will become 2.4. And now they're both rounded to the tenth place. Percentage uncertainty equals percent uncertainty in slope equals design. It's the absolute uncertainty, delta, slope over the value of slope, space bar, fancy fraction. And then you also have to multiply by 100%. I guess that's a good thing to show. So we take the value of slope, uh, first the uncertainty, and it's good to use the unrounded uncertainty, not the 0.4, but the 0.43165. It's also important, include the units. First though, I'm just going to make my fraction by hitting divided and then spacebar, or slash and then spacebar. The slope unrounded was 2.3879. Paste those same units and multiply by 100%. 100% equals, what is that? It's funny how, I love how this thing turns off automatically, like to save power the way that your actual calculator turns off. I find that so funny. Because uh, clearly, <laughs> we're not using battery life. There are no batteries here. I'm plugged into the outlet on my computer. 2.3879. And it's that times 100. Oops! Times that times 100 gives me 18%. Round to the nearest whole number because we are above 2%. Now, I could do the same thing for the y intercept. Right? So I just said in the video, uh, I said I can do the same thing for the y-intercept, then I calculated it, and the y-intercept has an uncertain percentage uncertainty of 540%. That's absurd. So don't calculate the percentage uncertainty. All we're going to do is just calculate the absolute uncertainty. So you would just copy over this, change slope to absolute, I'm uh, sorry, change slope to y-intercept, y-intercept, I'm going to copy y-intercept here, change slope to y-intercept. Hmm. And the two values of y-intercept, 2.1156. And then I've got a negative. I'm subtracting a negative, so 1.431. And I don't like how this is spilling onto the next line. So I'm just going to copy this, hit enter to create a second line, and finish my calculation here. Calculator. Mr. Buttons. <laughs> Love how this thing turns off. Uh, there are no batteries in you. Why are you turning off to save battery life? Okay, so 2.1. 
1.1156. Subtracting a negative, so adding 1.431. Is that right? Sure looks right to me. And then I divide the result by 2. So 1.7733. My units are just centimeters. Yep. Uh, and so hence my y-intercept, the y-intercept of my function is y, this is really cool, you'll love this. Let's say you forgot to use the font, y-intercept equals. And then you're like, oh wait, I need this to be a number. Uh, I need this to be in the fancy, you know, formula font. You just highlight what you want to be in formula. You hit Alt equals, or you do insert, and you click the equation button, and it changes it into a formula. Wow. Thank you, Word, for these powerful capabilities. Okay. So the value of the y-intercept was point. Oh, that's me. <laughs> it was point three two eight five. Oops, that's what we're doing today. 0.3285. And then I need plus or minus, so I'll just copy the plus or minus from up here. And then, what is it? 1.77, so that rounds to the first sig fig, so 2. Oops, plus or minus 2. Oh gosh, what have I done? What have I done? I've created a monster. This goes over here. Plus or minus 0.2. Centimeters are the units. The italicize. But wait a second. If I round this to the same sig fig, or the same decimal place rather, it'll be zero. Well, that's okay. You can you can make that rounding. You can round it this way if you'd like. If you feel really uncomfortable doing that, because you shouldn't really be rounding things to zero. I mean, it's kind of a strange weight around so that you have no sig figs, zero. So what you can do instead is you can uh, just leave this as 0.3, round to the first sig fig it has, then 2, instead of 2 I will round to 1.8. In these limited circumstances, <coughs> it's okay for you to have two sig figs in the uncertainty, the absolute uncertainty, that's okay, we'll let it slide. You just talked about how you didn't want to round your y-intercept to zero. Don't calculate the percentage uncertainty. Uh, it comes out to 540 percent. All you would say is, look, the y-intercept, you know, later in the evaluation you might say the y-intercept uh, of 0.3 plus or minus 1.8 falls within, uh, you know, or it encompasses the value of zero. So the fact that there's a y-intercept on my final function, on my graph, does not necessarily indicate the presence of uncert uh, uh, of systematic error. In fact, that y-intercept uh, could just be due to the random errors and the fluctuations up and down. Uh, the uncertainty encompasses zero as a one of the possible values of y-intercept. Say something along those lines. Good. Uh, that's it. That's how you use fancy word features. And this is how you show your this is how you show your work doing the sample calculations. If you want to make these equations as well, you can. Just alt equals those bad boys and this one too. Right? If you just were like, oh. Uh oh, I lost the exponent, didn't I? So let me just do caret equals caret equals and then get rid of the italics. So that's it. This is how you go about uh, explaining your calculations in your lab report. Good luck. You'll do great work. Do not use word for word what I have said here. Write it in your own words so that you are academically honest and have academic integrity.